We now know what security is, but how do we implement security? And what approach do we take to ensure that we implement security the proper way? Approach to information security implementation. In organizations, there are two approaches, basically, well, the most popular approach to just implementing anything, not just information security, but to passing message or instructions or anything up across. We have the bottom up and the top down. This is more of a program management thing, but we'll definitely cover it in here on the high level. A bottom up approach is when the junior management are trying to make a decision or put things in place or keep bringing up proposals on how the organization should do certain things or how security control should be in place or how things should be within the organization. Bottom up is usually not the best approach because it seldom works. It lacks a number of critical features in terms of leadership and ensuring that le leadership and the rest of the organization comply. Because when it's coming from junior staff, or at least from bottom, nobody really pays much attention to it. It might have a lot of technical expertise because the people within the, at the junior level that keeps trying to make the change have a, a certain unique skill or a lot of technical skills and were able to identify the vulnerabilities and really want the change to be in place. But if it is coming from bottom up, it's, or if it is, or if this leadership, the top is not receptive to the approach, it's really hard to implement. The second one, which is usually the most preferred one, is called the top-down approach. And that is when change is initiated by upper management. So if the head of the company were to just instruct things or instruct, give policies or direct how things should be, it instantly uh, becomes part of the organization policies or at least the organization way of doing things. This is always the most preferred. And the, it is considered the most successful type of approach. Now, how organizations deal with information security, software development, information systems, usually is from a life cycle approach. And the best way to approach information security is considered from a system development life cycle or a software development life cycle. An SDLC is a methodology for design and implementation of information system or a software. And a methodology from a dictionary definition is just a formal approach to solving a problem based on a structured sequence or a, or a procedure. Using a methodology to do things ensure a rigorous process with clearly defined goals and also increases the probability of success. So when an organization is going to build a software or implement an information system, it is always advisable to have a life cycle approach where there is a clearly defined goal and it follows a step from step one to two to three and four. We call it stages in terms of SDLC and different organizations have their own stage and steps depending on their unique goals and their unique implementations. But a general consensus around software and system development life cycle is that it should have at a minimum the five stages. One including the, uh, the first one being the investigation stage, which is part of researching, planning, and understanding what 
how we try what the organization is trying to approach if you are building a software so understanding what are you trying to approach by building this uh what are you trying to achieve by building this software what is the goal of having this software how are we going to build it and doing all the research the next is the analysis the analysis involved okay now that you have clearly defined goal how are you approaching it you know analyzing if it makes sense then the design which is part of the logical and physical the design is actually designing how the software is going to be or how the device uh, the system is going to be if it's going to be if it's a network that's the part where you design the network architecture of how it is going to look what con uh, what control should be in place and things that do not need to be there you also do not have to put it in the design now logical design has to do more around softwares where you are designing the logical aspect, things like access control, and physical design has to do more on systems in terms of determining where where are we put in the system. If it's a server, okay, we're gonna put it in a room. What should be the temperature of the room? Should should we have air conditioning? How should um, ventilation and air flow into the server room and out? How should it be handled and all of those things that's around physical um, design. Like I mentioned, logical is more of access control from a logical viewpoint. How are we going to design? Um, how are we going to design the um, controls around the users who are going to be accessing the device, things like passwords, what should be the character and things like that. After you're done with the, after one is done with the design stage, the next stage is the implementation. That is when whatever is being built gets built. So you build it or you implement it. If it's a software, you build it. If it's a system you already buy, you, you already bought and things like that, you just go ahead and implement it. After the implementation, everything is working, you go to the maintenance stage, which is Maintenance include change as well as operation, operational. Uh, we tend to call it O and M. That's uh, operational maintenance. Everything needs to be maintained from technology viewpoint. If you have a computer, you need to occasionally run antivirus. You need to clean your computer. Same thing. If um, you have a server, you need to from a physical point of view you need to change the air filters and everything that's the maintenance lately um a lot of organizations are adding disposal as part of the sdlc process which is how do we dispose of the system what once it is um one once it's no longer needed or when its life cycle is um towards its end of life cycle how do you dispose it an example is an organization has a lot of systems they are becoming old, not really fast enough to function, and um, every user is complaining. It's no longer serving the purpose of the organization. The organization needs to find a way to dispose it. As we know, there are certain things that definitely need a special um, disposal process, especially if the system is considered a sensitive system. So the hard drive must be removed, it must be wiped or even crushed completely. Um, the system must either be stored somewhere if it's considered a high sensitive system that they cannot recycle it. They need to store it somewhere for retention and things like that. Now, the deployment. Deployment is around how SDLC itself, the soft, uh, software or system development life cycle is being deployed. We have what we refer to Agile, uh, Waterfall and Agile. They are the two most popular SDLC deployment methods. But lately, DevOps is coming up. And then SecOps, which is security uh, within DevOps, is also considered. I highly recommend looking into the NIST 800-64.
that is um, security consideration in the SDLC. It is the document that outlines the methodology, the SDLC process used by US government to protect all federal information systems. It is actually um, required as part of um, the FISMA Act of 2014. And I can show the document. Should be 64. This is the document that pro that outlines security consideration in the system development life cycle as it relates to US federal systems definitely um, go through it. As you can see here, it has the five stages, that is initiation, development, attribution, implementation, uh, slash assessment, operational maintenance, as well as disposal. Let's take a quick look at the initiation um, phase. So that's it. When you have the time, Definitely uh, read it. These are all open, accessible to anyone on the public net. If you are, um, I'll also be uploading it to Canvas. Let me take a look. It's an, uh, a lot of organizations tend to define their own way of things, uh, really unique. And then there are the generic ones that other organizations just tend to leverage. But for the US government, we follow uh, 864. So we talk about SDLC as the process and approach to pretty much develop a system or a software. But we didn't touch about securing the process itself. So one of the best approach for handling uh, for implementing security is by integrating security to be part of the SDLC itself. We usually call it baked in. So you include security as part of the approach rather than patching it af uh, after everything has been developed. Many organizations definitely recognize the need to implement security as part of planning and as a result um, including the US government as a result we have what is called the secure software assurance as part of the um, common body of knowledge it's actually um, also a document that outlines how we should integrate security as part of the SDLC okay also as an additional resource I have it here you should definitely read information security slash uh, privacy consideration for software and advancing national strategy to secure cyberspace. It is a slide, but it is um, developed by DOD, I believe, and Homeland Security. It just details how security should be integrated as part of the DLC, uh, SDLC. Let's take a quick look at the document. So this is the document, able to find it. It's a slide deck, you can get the chance, take a quick look. It has a lot of information on how security should be integrated into SDLC and ensuring I'm pretty much software assurance. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, there is the NIST approach. That is, um, NIST is an organization that handles US government standards. And there is a process which is, um, no, there's a document which is the NIST 800-64, which I showed you earlier. 
and this is the process that needs to take initiation development slash um, acquisition slash development implementation slash assessment operation slash maintenance and disposal next we're going to this is microsoft uh, approach as you can see they have about seven different stage starting with training requirement design implementation verification release and then response as i mentioned earlier each organization tend to have their own unique way of handling it but the best approach is uh the best thing is to have an SDLC process and also integrate security as part of the process.